Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. If you are new to this channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and get involved in the comment section down below. So this is our player ratings, fully interactive episode for you guys at home to get involved. Go on our website and drop your player ratings and make a difference to the ratings and see um, whether you agree or disagree with my ratings, whether you have a look at the average and sort of see how the average is, are you higher or lower than the average? So uh, we're going to do our player ratings, but, you know, what what a performance that was. I don't normally watch match of the day. I watch match of the day. Um, I've watched the goals. I've watched the highlights. And I just see different things every time I watch certain goals, like different runs, different movements, different celebrations. And, oh, it's just... A fantastic day, a great, great, great day um, in B6. It was fantastic. And, you know, I sit in the whole 10. So when you're in the whole 10, then, you know, that first one went in and, you know, that you ooze, that sort of passion comes out of you because you know it's a big game. And then the second one went in and you're like, here we go. Third one and you're like, what is going? You're just turning around in like disbelief to everybody, like what's going on? And then four, one, five, and six, and everyone's just like, this is just absolutely fantastic. And you know, even the best thing about it is like the people that you sit next to, the people that you sit in front of, and you know, do you have that sort of rapport during the season? And you, you you've made friends with those people, and to see them sort of happy and and the smiles and everything it's like you know it's one big family wherever you sit at Villa and it was just one of them days where it was just absolutely fantastic so a fair play to everybody right so let's go in there then let's go to our player ratings um uh, what we want to do is we want to go to uh utvpodcast.co.uk uh, and then you want to go under social hub and these are all of our fully interactive uh, concepts that you guys can do at home. Score predictions, predict the lineups, and then you want to go on player ratings. So uh, I imagine that there's quite a few high scores in this one. Actually, some of them aren't, aren't as high as what I thought, to be fair. But I'm going to do mine, and I'm going to get stuck in there. I expect that there's going to be some very, very high scores. Um, so... We will kick it off then, and we will go with we'll go Martinez nine. We'll go Martinez nine. I thought his kicking was good in this game, and it showed the flexibility of of how we play and how we build up and how we adjust against certain teams. He was going long quite often. Um, and I felt like that was a great tactic to employ to completely bypass the whole of the Brighton forward line and midfield. Um, and he was firing them into Watkins and Zaniolo, who were drifting wide on that left-hand side. Um, didn't really have too much to do, did he? Um, so, you know, basically brilliant performance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a nine. Ezri Kansa, I thought, was absolutely fantastic, along with Pau Torres, and we're going to talk about them combined. I have noticed that Pau Torres has been adapting to the Premier League. He has the last two games now, Chelsea and Brighton, looked absolutely fantastic at the back. He's looked composed. His awareness is there. His physicality has been there. His reading of the game, stepping out into a challenge and holding off the ball was fantastic against Brighton. His passing range is absolutely phenomenal. And he's really now growing into uh, a really good centre-half in the Premier League. And he's adapted very, very well. Um, and I think now this partnership with Konsa is starting to look really, really strong. So um, it's it's one thing sort of coming from a different league and, and adjusting, but, you know, we, we, we're trying to push these players. We want to we wanna progress as a football team. And I think with Pau Torres, he's adjusting really, really nicely now. So uh, football side of things, passing range, fantastic. 
And there, that physicality, that reading of the game, that awareness of the Premier League, he's, he's really starting to get that. So two fantastic performances in Consa and Pau Torres. And, you know, I couldn't be more happy for Pau. Luca Dean, I'm going to go with a eight. I thought he was really good. I thought for me, when I'm thinking about Luca Dean, I'm not I'm not I'm not scoring this on going forward. I'm scoring him basically on his defensive work. And I was fully aware last week of the runners on the shoulders, the defensive um awareness that he needs to have. And I felt like against Brighton, he was absolutely switched on. He was absolutely fantastic. And I thought he had a really good, solid game. Uh, and he's just his positional awareness was brilliant as well. Now, we're going to have some big scores in this episode. There are going to be some big scores to certain players. And Cash getting a nine is an absolute massive score because, again, he's up against Matoma. Very fast, very pacey, very, you know, good off the ball, good at drifting, good at drifting centrally. And I thought Matty Cash, I mean, I think Matoma's still in Cash's pocket, to be fair, but Cash was class. He was tenacious, he was aggressive, he was quick, he was fired up. And he, when he got forward, he delivered that ball. And that was a great ball for Watkins' goal. And if you watch that goal again, if you watch Cash's um, positioning and his awareness in that move, he goes once, he comes back. I think he goes again, comes back, and then he goes so for him to hold his line was absolutely brilliant, but to also be clever enough to know to try and entice that player forward and take them back, it really gives McGinn, when he plays that ball into a cash, that time. And I think we bided our time really, really well on that right-hand side. And, and Cash had an absolute brilliant game. He was, he was fantastic. Mr. Bubakar Kamara. Gets an absolute 10 from me. For that first half, Kamara, he was absolutely unreal. The, the aggression on the press. And the prop, the thing is with this game was, he didn't have his partner in crime, Dougie, right next to him in this game. There was split. So Luis was further forward. Kamara was defensively the holder and the sitter. But at times when Brighton were high up the pitch, it was Kamara that was coming in man for man and engaging and winning the ball. Every single time he won that ball and he was absolutely unreal. His reading of the game was second to none. And I think he was integral for this 6-1 victory. And I think what I will say about this, the, these scores and, and the way we play is that like I said in the match reaction, it's very easy to just watch what happens on the ball and base opinions on what they do when they have the ball. But for me, there's more to football than the person that's got the ball. There's more to it than the person that's scoring a goal and getting an assist. It's what happens before that phase. There's so many times when I watch football where if we're on that left-hand side and we're in the whole tent and I'm looking and say... Player on the left-hand side has picked up the ball, Luca Dean, and I'm looking at Luca Dean. My next phase is to look elsewhere. I'll be looking at where the runner's coming on that right-hand side. Where's the position of the defence? Are we set sound in case we lose the ball? Where's that runner? Has Zaniolo gone inside or has he gone out wide? Has Watkins split centre-halves? Where's Diaby? How's the shape looking on the... So my mind is continually evolving when I'm watching Villa. And... Basically, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes stats will not pick up certain things, but it's what they do off the ball, which is really, really important. So my basic point is Kamara didn't get no assist, he didn't score no goals, but him winning that ball up higher up the pitch enabled us to push forward and then enabled us to attack and get assist and score great goals. So Kamara, for me, was absolutely... Fantastic, and he gets a ten for me. I thought he was. I thought he was unreal. Dougie Louise again. A Dougie Louise performance where it's hard to pinpoint at times what he does because he just does everything so well. He was. It's just Dougie Louise, isn't it? He's just class. I mean, he's 
His uh, position when he was in that triangle on that press was great. His passing is brilliant. That one, that goal for, I think it was Watkins, he might be the DRB one. Um, where he sort of like flicks it up and he gets fouled and he and he buys a little bit of time, doesn't he? And then we go down that left hand side and you know again that Louise little flick up and you know that's crucial to that goal and you know his awareness getting in advanced positions for the sixth goal where Watkins you know gets his shot saved and he's in the right place to put in a great finish and you know you see Louise during the game he's like this to the whole ten he's. He wants the atmosphere and he's a big time player for Villa. Absolute big time player. And yeah, he's, he's, he's a joy to watch. And, you know, he's, he's, he's absolutely unreal. Talking about someone else who's unreal. Another 10 for John McGinn. What, what a performance this was. What a performance this was. Where do I start? The ball to cash. The ball to cash for the first one was exquisite, right? The little lofty chip pass for Watkins' hat trick was absolutely unreal. What vision. And you know with that one, I talk about like seeing different things every time you see that goal. Watch when McGinn gets that ball and he already has a look. He has a look at where Watkins is, but he knows he has to wait because Watkins isn't in the right position to receive this pass. He looks up, waits, then he scoops it over. It's a great pick. It's an absolute great pick. And the, another great pick was the pass for Watkins when Louise scores. Cuts Duncan Webster in half. He was everywhere. He was everywhere. You know, I love it as well when sort of like we're defending and he and he motors he, he motors to nick that ball back and he and he fires it upfield. It, it is he's fantastic. Like he was everywhere. He covered every blade of grass. Captain's performance. You can even see him on the goals. He knows when we need to hurry up the celebrations. He knows when we need to slow down the celebrations. The kid is clever. He's really, really clever. Um, and he's a great captain and a great leader. And, you know, I don't think he gets talked about enough, his leadership, but he's an absolute brilliant, brilliant player. And sometimes he might have not have the greatest of games, but like I've said, his decision-making as a leader is fantastic. So John McGinn, fair play. Fair play indeed, because it was brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant performance. Now, Zaniolo will go... We'll go on 7.5. Right, we'll go seven. And this was a really good performance from him because he had a task in this game to push further up the pitch and to not be a nuisance because I think that's doing what his role was a little bit of an interest tactic, really. But... He was tasked with pressing from the front and he was a presence up top. Now, he probably has got no assists. He's probably got poor passing ranges, passing uh, accuracy. But if we go back to Watkins' second goal, that goal comes from Zaniolo. Zaniolo's press, press is one of the Brighton players. He loses the ball, so he plays a misplaced pass. And Ollie Watkins is gone. And that was all down to Zaniolo pressing and being a key part. And like I say, certain players, you might not get the, the perfect stats, etc. The eye test and what he's doing for the team, he played a crucial part in that first half for me. He was getting forward. He was a threat. You know, even running off the ball, that's still really good work because you're dragging players out of position. So there's no stat that can show you that you've dragged someone out of position. But again, he had a really good performance. So, you know, I, I was pleased. I was pleased with Zaniolo's performance. Uh, there's plenty more to come from him. And for the team, he worked really, really hard. And 
it was the right substitution to take off at 60 and bring Ramsey on. So, you know, it all worked out fantastically well. DRB, Musa, fantastic. Eight for me. Um, explosive. He's so quick. My eyes can't keep up with him at times. So quick, explosive. What did I talk about in the summer? What did I talk about we missed last season? Explosive power. We're a powerhouse on the counter attack. We are an absolute powerhouse. Pace to burn and pace. Defenders can't live with it, but we've not just got players that have got pace. We've got ones with quality, with vision. Watkins, that little pass to Diaby for the Diaby goal that went in off uh, Espunin. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love him. I absolutely love him. And that Diaby song, he's just so good. So good. Uh, yeah, so fantastic performance from Diaby. Who, how is that average 8.3? The average of what Villa fans have rated these players are on the right-hand side. And I've got to say, I'm very surprised at how low some of these are. Ollie Watkins, 10. Fantastic pace to burn. You know, he was direct. He ran he ran that back line ragged, ragged. His control was great. His touch was brilliant. His vision was brilliant. His finishing was clever. It, it was just a fantastic performance from Watkins. Absolutely unreal. I mean, the first goal was a great finish. Great run. The second one for me was probably his best goal. You know, to, to put it in that near post, to control, to come back inside, to put it near post was really, really clever. The pass for Diaby for the goal was brilliant. The shot for his hat-trick was brilliant as well. Um, should have had a fourth. And he was just, he was just, he was majestic, absolutely majestic. And I can't speak more highly of him. And, 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 and you know, it just, it just shows, doesn't it, that you can get off to a slow score, scoring goals, you can score an at-trick and you're on four in seven. So that's what strikers can do. So let's hope now he's going on this scoring spree, um, you know, and, he, and he's going to score goals. and. Um, I think he's got 50, 50 Premier League goals. Is it 50 Premier League goals now for Villa? I think he's got 50 Premier League goals now. Or has he got 50 goals for Villa and 44 Premier League goals? Can't remember. One of those, he, he, he's, I think it's 50. Um, so he's got some, he's, you know, he's got to get that Derby record. Uh, but yeah, massive respect. Massive, massive respect. Uh, so Ramsey coming off the bench. Brilliant. The finish, I mean, how good was that finish? Off the post. I, I love finishes that go off the post. Came on, I'm going to go nine, because he came on when we were under the cosh a little bit, and he gave us more freedom. His dribbling was class, and the finish was just brilliant. Uh, Duran loved that challenge when he came on, and he just went boom, straight through someone, um, and it was a throw-in. And then, what? Well, yeah, Tielemans, better seven, I think's fair. So uh, those are my ratings then. So Martinez, nine. Conson, nine. Luca Dean, eight. Cash, nine. Pau Torres, nine. Kamara, ten. Louise, nine. John McGinn, ten. Zaniolo, seven. Diaby, eight. Watkins, ten. Ramsey, nine. Duran, eight. Tielemans, seven. For me, man of the match is, a, is between John McGinn and Ollie Watkins, um, and I am going to go with, I'll go Watkins, you got to go Watkins, haven't you? I'll go Watkins, man of the match, Ollie Watkins, uh, but it's close with McGinn because, you know, the assists and the build-up to some of those goals was incredible. So, very, very happy Villa fan, 
Love the performance. We've got the debrief coming out tomorrow. Uh, we've got a stacked lineup on there as well. So that's going to be fantastic. Um, and I just want to say thanks to everybody on social media who um, has been showing a lot of support to me over the last day or two. Um, you know, I mean, going on TNT Sport and, you know, et cetera. And we had the video with TNT Sport and just, you know, when I'm at the games and people coming up to me like, your support's absolutely huge. And, you know, it, it's just really nice for you to write nice things because, um, you know, I do try to work really hard on, on, on this podcast and create content. And the biggest thing for me is to sort of like one thing is to be true to myself and, and, and be very like myself on here and, and give honest thoughts. And the next phase is to try and bring you quality content. So, you know, not just ranting and, and raving for you to all sort of get something out of it, whether it's, you know, the, the stats that we show, the tactical pad and the build up on different teams and educate you on different teams and, you know, opposition fans coming on, the previews that we do and just all stuff like that, really. I, I, try, and, I try and make it very sort of worthwhile watching and, and, and educational and to, to the highest level I can, really, because I think, you know, Villa in sort of like the... The media, we, we we don't really get talked about and nobody really sort of looks at us in, in depth. So I'll try and bring that for you and, you know, try and create stuff where you can just completely get involved with and, and you are involved because when I first set this up, that's what I really wanted. I wanted something that Villa fans can feel a, a part of. So, you know, all those concepts that we do, they're there for you to get involved with. So, uh, you know, the comment sections are like fan forums. We've got you know, the player ratings, like you can go on now and, and, and put your ratings in there. You can do your lineups and share them on social media. You can do your score predictions. And so it's all there for, for you to, to be fair, to, for you to, to get involved with. And fan cams, you know, now shout out to, to all the guys that are coming on the fan cams. They're there for you to, to come and have your say and, and get involved and just, get on this massive journey with us, really, because, you know, for us as a channel, we're only at sort of, you know, we're only at the edge, you know what I mean? My ambition for this channel is to take it like skyrocket, so it can only get there with you guys, so that's why you're on this journey with us, so uh, just, yeah, so I just wanted to say thanks to to everyone, really, who watches, comments, and and, and plays their part really. So I mean, it's, the channel's nothing without you guys. So uh, yeah. So shout out to you all. You're all legends. Uh, so if you can subscribe, then it helps me out. Um, drop a like and comment your thoughts. Up the villa. <laughs>